So this guy is what we want to change today, the fuel filter, because this guy's got new engine oil, new oil filter, there's a new air filter, there's a new transmission filter, it's got new coolant, and all of the driveline oils have been done. Rear defoil, front defoil, transfer case, and the brake fluid, and the power steering fluid looks good. So, the last filter is this one, and I've never done one on a van before, and having a quick look on YouTube, there is a few filter videos for Toyota Hiuses, normally the cartridge type for the newer models, but none for the 1KZTE in the Hiace Super Custom or the KZH100. So, in this video, we're going to try and replace this. So I'm starting by moving these wires out of the way. This one just looks to be a ground, and this one is one for one of the temperature sensors that goes to the block. There is no way that I can get my pliers in here in between the power steering reservoir and this air box to undo the fuel going out to the engine. The fuel coming into the engine is quite easily accessible, so I can undo that. I can just use, it's got tabs on it, I can just use my fingers to squeeze them together. And then we can just slide this fuel line off the housing. You might have to give it a twist sometimes if it's been on there for a while. And before I knock it completely off, I think undo the housing here. Well, that tells me that this hasn't been changed in quite some time. So now with this off, we can now get to the fuel lines. So I can undo this one properly now. Put them all the way off. Remember there's air pressure in the system, so you want to be a little bit cautious. And it might pay just to put like a bolt or a nut or something in there, which I think I might do. So these um, little plastic furniture screws just bung that in there for now. Just remember not to twist them too much, otherwise you'll end up snapping plastic off into your fuel lines. Not fun. Your injector pump will not enjoy that. So I'll just bend this out of the way. Put that there. Now, we'll pull this up and get to this fuel hose, which someone has very conveniently put the, the prongs in the wrong direction. So I'll use my short stubby pliers to get them around. Just bend the hose that way. Get on that. Get the squeeze, pull it down. Turn it around so it's the right way around. Easy to get to. Now I can just gently pull the fuel lines off. So this one is the one that goes to the engine. So obviously you'll get a little bit of fuel that comes out half of the course. I'll stick my little bung in, make sure it's not brittle. It'll do. And underneath we should have an electrical connection, which we do. I recommend not trying to spill diesel on the carpet in the car because your car will then smell pretty atrocious and you'll forever be wondering if your diesel's leaking. And obviously diesel is not like petrol, so it won't just evaporate, it's quite an oily fuel. A little bit fiddly to get to, just the location of the plug. There we go, that's some more purchase on that now. Bit of a wiggle. And that's off. So that's your fuel fil filter system. 
you have your fuel filter housing on top with a primer pump the filter itself this one is Japanese because there's Japanese writing on it it's an OEM filter as well and it's very dirty so it tells me it's probably due for a change and then underneath you have the electrical connector on your water sensor so this is meant to pick up if there's water in the fuel system and trip a light on the dashboard for you to stop there should be a drain plug here there is underneath and uh, when that light comes on you undo this drain plug which you can get to on this car through the left hand side or the passenger wheel well and drain out any water that's on the bottom close it up and hopefully you should be fine but if that does ever happen and you most likely won't have a spare filter on hand you drain the water out you drive uh, to the nearest auto parts store get yourself a replacement fuel filter and put that one in as soon as possible because the last thing you want is water running through your diesel injection system cool so let's get to work on this now there are a lot of ways that you can remove this top nut here and what I used to do because I never had a vice um, is basically put them between bricks try put the filter between my legs get as much grip on it as I could until I realized that most Toyotas have this reversible filter housing so you can just pop the filter back in place put your nuts back on tighten them up and then you have essentially a good strong position that acts as a vice here's where this bloke comes in So, this is what most people use to undo this, and I don't really like it because in all of the cars that I've used this on, it damages this plastic bit here. And I don't know about you, but if I want to do a job in my car, I don't feel very well about it afterwards if I end up damaging something. This is 23 years old, it's brittle old plastic, and this has sharp metal teeth designed to grip and grab something. So, this is always going to come out worse off. So instead, what I've done is I got myself some long needle nose pliers and I've popped it into this little cavity here. And then what we do with uh, wheel bearings is you use a screwdriver just to get a bit of purchase on there and undo it without any damage. Cool. Oh dear, that is quite dirty. A whole lot of small moths or bugs or flies in there. That's um, I've never seen that before. On our water sensor, we want to remove the salt O-ring from it because we have a new one that comes in the box. This one is well crushed and old. We'll pop that in there, pop the new o-ring on. Straight them on. And this does not have to be gorilla tight. I'm not going to use a tool to tighten it. Simply because that o-ring will do its job. These normally have a threaded uh, section on the bottom where you can get some grip on it this one doesn't so we'll just try and get some purchase on and get it so this guy is not gonna fit is he So this 
seems a little bit excessive. It's a pipe wrench that's designed for garage doors and things like that to torsion them. But sometimes you just have to use what you have. What is that? That just came out of the filter. And that is a fly. That's been soaking in diesel. And he's just disintegrated. Great. Boy, am I glad I'm changing the fuel filter. That is easily tight enough. So now I'm just going to reverse the installation by putting the electrical connections back. So, open. We'll put the tank fuel hose coming in because it's got to draw fuel from somewhere. Put Mr. Hose Clip back on. That's good. And now we pump. And I can already feel fuel coming into the system. So you're looking for fuel spitting out the bottom outlet there where it should go into the hose that goes into the injection pump and you just want to pump until fuel comes out there could take some time oh, see that so we now have a steady flow of fuel coming out so give this one more squirt while it's in the there we go. That's now full of fuel. Let's slide this bugger back on. Oh, I'm sorry if I sound weird because my head is right next to the camera. It might sound a little creepy. And put the hose clip back on. Put the entire unit back in its mounting position. Give it a few more pumps until you feel it firm up. We put our bolts back on when I find them. Oh, I've lost my nuts. Before we start the engine, we have to do one critical thing spray everything down with brake cleaner because if something starts to leak. You want to be able to identify it from a clean, dry surface. Oop. From a clean, dry surface and not an oily mess that's saturated in diesel fuel. So the brake cleaner goes on and it coats the diesel fuel. It also evaporates so it dries. And don't be shy with using it, you know. Give everything a good squirt where diesel would have gone in. And now, we can run the engine up and check for leaks, make sure that it starts all right. So, with that all done, it's uh, time to put the tools away. And uh, it took no more than 45 minutes. That's worth filming, so realistically with some basic hand tools you should get, be able to knock this out in about 20 minutes. And um, as always, thanks for watching.